Ron Hextall is the greatest man who has ever lived on this planet Earth and is probably going to be the Flyers' greatest general manager in the history of this NHL franchise. The man has done it again. I cannot believe this. So, what's going on today, guys? Bojo here. And uh, I was going to wait to talk to you guys about this little trade that just happened today. I was going to wait till Sunday because I am going to be doing the Flyers Talk podcast on Sunday. But it couldn't, like, as big as news as this is, it cannot wait until Sunday. We got to talk about this right now. So, if you guys didn't hear, the Philadelphia Flyers traded both Vinny LeCavalier and Luke Shen to the Los Angeles Kings for a third round pick in this year's NHL draft and Jordan Wheel. So in the matter of pretty much Ron Hextall making trades so far with this with this team, he's traded away the guy the likes of Chris Pronger, Nicholas Grossman, Zach Ronaldo, Vanilla Cavalier. The only one, you know, the one only kind of mediocre trade that Ron Hextall has screwed up so far as his term as GM has been the RJ Umberger for Scott Hartnell trade, which, you know, in the long run, for production wise, it doesn't make sense, but for cap wise, it makes sense. So I'll give him the benefit of the doubt on that one anyway. But this is a huge trade here that the Flyers just pulled off. Now, the Flyers are retaining both half the cap. 50% of both Luke Shen and Vanilla Cavalier's contract. So, Luke Shen was in the final year of his $3.6 million contract. So, half that for the rest of this year. That's only $1.8 for the rest of the year. And that's gone. And that, 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 goes, uh, that goes away once the season is over. However, Vanilla Cavalier's deal was supposed to expire in 2018. So, two years from now. And that was a $4.5 million contract. So technically speaking, we would have to hold $2.25 million for the next two years, which isn't that big of a deal. However, there is rumors going around. Not really rumors. It's kind of been confirmed at this point that Vanilla Cavalier's agent has pretty much said that he's going to play for the Kings for the rest of the season and does intend to retire at the season's end. So... If that's the case, that $2.25 million or whatever, $4.5 million per year or however you're going to deal with it, taking away half of that cap, that's going to go away at the end of the year if he decides to retire, which is amazing because there's people like saying like, oh, it doesn't, it's not going to go away because he's th- he's over 35 and stuff like that. Well, the thing is that only works if you sign a guy who's over the age of 35. Vinny LeCavier signed this contract with the Flyers when he was 33 years old. Great job, Paul Holmgren. Really, really great free agency signing you made there. And looking back on it, absolutely terrible. But in any case, this is a huge deal. It's a huge cap saver for the Flyers. They have almost around $4 million worth of cap space available now. So now they really don't have to worry about calling up and down players if they need to. They free up another defensive spot, and uh, even though it was probably going to be that Luke Shen was not going to re-sign with the team this coming offseason, you get a pick back. You get a prospect in Jordan Wheel, which we'll talk about in just a little bit, but this is just a huge trade. Vinny and Luke Shen both have a chance now to go win a cup with LA once again, because that's typical of the Flyers. Trade the trade the, trade the the players to the LA Kings, and uh, more than likely, they'll win a cup somehow, but... It's a huge deal for Ron Hextall. He frees up cap. It's going to be uh, available for uh, another roster spot on the team because the the way it looks that Jordan Wheel is possibly might get some might get a chance to get called up to the team. I think he is currently in the fams right now because I'm going back and forth uh, from like uh, overviews of these trades and. Uh, uh, seeing how, where these guys are going to play and whatnot. But I think Wheel's going to go to the AHL, I think, or he might be on the team right now. I'm not sure. But he's only played 10 games with the LA Kings so far this year. He hasn't gotten a point. But supposedly this guy was lighting it up last year in the AHL, so in the Calder Cup playoffs as well. So this guy definitely has the talent for sure. And he's only 23. Like, you can't go any wrong with that. And uh, like I said, you free up a defensive spot next year. So 
one of the prospects is going to get their chance, whether it be Provorov, whether it be Sanheim, whether it be Hag, whether it be uh, Sam Warren, whatever the case. You free up another defensive spot. You free up Cap. And this is just an amazing trade for the Flyers to get it done, especially if Vinny retires. If, if Vinny retires, this trade just got a hell of a lot better because you just, you just got rid in that one trade. If that happens, if Vinny retires, you just got rid of eight... Point one million dollars in one trade. It's almost identical to what happened with the Chris Pronger and Nicholas Grossman trade. I think he got rid of what, like seven million dollars in one trade. Ron Hextall has the possibility of getting rid of eight million dollars pretty much in one single solitary trade. Absolutely ridiculous. So, like I said, because of that trade, the Flyers now have four point zero five million dollars in cap space immediately. So. There's not going to be any worries now about calling up teams back and forth. And if the Flyers do manage to become playoff contenders by the trade deadline, it gives the Flyers some wiggle room to, you know, possibly make some trades with some teams if they want to go on a playoff push. However, I don't think that is going to be the that's going to be the case. As much as I want to see the Flyers succeed, and as much as every hockey fan wants to see the Flyers succeed, I really don't want to see the Flyers be contenders at the trade deadline. I really do want to see them to become sellers because you got you have players like RJ Umberger, you guys you have guys like Mark Strait, Nick Schultz, uh, Andrew McDonald, Sam Gagne, even Braden Shen. I'll throw him in there as well because he's on the final deal of his contract. You have all these players right here that you could get some pretty good value back for them. And what I mean by pretty good, I mean like. A draft pick here, a draft pick there, maybe a prospect here, maybe a prospect there. And if Ron Hextall is holding these players, like Luke Shen and Vinny Cavalier, and getting some amazing profit and deals back from these guys, like you just got a 23-year-old in a third-round pick for Luke Shen, who's 26, and for a guy who's like 30, what, 37, 38, I think, or 35 years old is Vinny Cavalier at around this time. I'm not really sure, but still... You get a young talent back in a draft pick for those two guys. Imagine what Ron Hextall could get back for those kind of players. And this opens up the room, too. You think the Flyers are in on Jonathan Drouin as well? I don't know. You have Cap now. Do you, do you make it happen? I, I don't see it because I see Ron Hextall as a person who's still hold very dear to um, him with both draft picks and prospects. So he really likes to stock them up uh, really, really well. So I don't see that being a thing, but... The fact that the Flyers now have cap room now is just a tremendous, tremendous thing, and I couldn't, I, I couldn't be happier for this team right now. And if they, like I said, if Vinny retires and the Flyers are sellers at the trade deadline, it's just gonna make this, it's gonna make this trade go back. It, like you're gonna look back at this trade and see like that was one of the biggest trades that the Flyers needed to do in order to help out the future of this team because it's. It's just amazing, man. $8.1 million, possibly, in one trade. Getting rid of those guys, getting a prospect back, getting Jordan Wheel, who possibly could... I could see him making this NHL team. I really could. He wants an... You know, it's going to be like one of those players that needs to change the scenery. If he doesn't work out, he doesn't work out. But he's 23 years old. He's young still. And uh, I really do think that he could possibly make this player's team. Maybe he's like a third-line player. Maybe a second-line player. You never know. If Shen goes, then you, you have a winger like Jordan Wheel. And he's a winger, which the Flyers need. The Flyers need wingers. And uh, I'm glad Ron Hextall got it done. I'm, I'm telling you, the Kings were interested in Luke Shen. And I bet you Ron Hextall was like, we'll give you Luke Shen, but I'm not letting this trade go through unless you take back one either... Andrew McDonald, RJ Umberger, or Vinny LeCavalier in the deal. And so I guess the Kings needed, I guess they were happy with Vinny LeCavalier. And if he was going to re retire, it helps out both teams if he's going to retire because the Kings don't have to pay him anymore and the Flyers don't have to pay him anymore. So it, in, in, in all honesty, it's like Luke Shen for Jordan Wheel in a third. In all honesty, Vinny LeCavalier is just thrown into the deal and uh, it's going to help both teams in the long, long run. So I guess. Ron, for all the times that Ron Hextall was in that LA Kings organization, I guess the GM now, who I don't know off the top of my head who it is, I guess he's basically just giving him a favor, doing him a favor nowadays, and uh, do not mess with Ron Hextall, man. This guy is one hell of an intimidating GM, and 
I'm, I'm loving the deals that he's making so far. So I'm probably going to talk about this more in-depthly on Sunday when we do our Flyers Talk podcast, but I felt like this just needed to be on its own little video today, and like I said, we'll have to see. We'll have to see if Luke Shen and Vinny LeCavalier can get their chance in L.A. to possibly win a cup with that team. We'll see what uh, the Flyers now will do with this cap. We'll see what happens with them at the trade deadline, if they're going to be contenders or sellers, hopefully sellers. We'll see if any more trades go by, because we know we just saw Johansson get dealt to Nashville for Seth Jones, so that was a thing. Um, and we'll see if Jordan Wheel is going to make an impact either on the Phantoms or on this Flyers team. We'll have to see what Hextall is going to do, and what Hextall is going to do by giving this kid here a chance. I really shouldn't say, say kid, he's the same damn age as me, but still, thank you, Ron Hextall. I love you. If you're a woman, I would definitely marry you, but I could not be happier with you. As the GM for this team, you are turning around Philadelphia, this Philadelphia hockey franchise quicker than I could ever ma imagine. Accelerated rebuild, baby, and I am just so excited to see what this Flyers team is going to be doing in the next couple years. So keep it up, Ron. Keep it up. And uh, thanks, guys, for listening. Let me know your opinions on this trade as well. What do you think? Who got the better win here? Was it the Flyers or was it the Los Angeles Kings? So thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned for this Sunday when we go more in-depthly, I guess you could say, about this trade on Sunday on our Flyers Talk podcast. Possibly we will get some guests on for that show, so stay tuned for that. But other than that, guys, thanks for watching. Leave a like, comment, subscribe as always. Ron Hextall, I will be praying to you tonight.